tonight we're going to be uh, looking further at uh, coding our new website that uh, Krista and I have been developing over the past uh, few weeks. And been uh, really having a lot of fun with that. And I think we're learning a lot as well. Um, so I'll just remind you that you can get over to cat5.tv slash web dev, short for web development. And by going there, uh, it's actually going to bring up a special site. I'm going to bring it up for you right now. Web dev. And there we are. And this actually has a list of all the episodes that pertain to this series. And it, in fact, has some downloads as well. You'll notice also that there are now progress archives starting this week. Um, so you can actually download an archive which contains the entire file structure um, as created on each episode so that you're able to follow along even if you're watching this after the fact. So if you're watching this down the road, uh, just note that you can use those archives in order to actually see where we got to at the time if you're unable to, uh, to see it uh, live on the air. Uh, so we're going to continually add those and the episode numbers uh, of the files correspond to the episode in which we created those files. So we're going to go back to our, uh, our source code that we've been working on. One of the things that you know that I like to do is I like to keep my files organized. I like to keep things really clean and I like to be able to find things anytime I need them. Right now I've got this comp.psd sitting on my desktop. I'm going to cut that and Eric, Eric knows what it is that I'll, I'll, I'm going to do here. I'm going to create a folder called to put our master files in. Oh, raw. We're going to create a folder called raw. This is just my own preference. I do it all caps so that when I'm uploading to FTP I can see that that is my raw folder. The reason that I do that is so that within the folder of this website I now have all my master files. So these are the files so that if I ever need to go back over things I have that ability. So now I've got that. By keeping things consistent, by keeping naming algorithms consistent, we're able to always find things regardless of how many websites we're developing. Somebody such as myself or Krista, uh, we, we create websites on an ongoing basis. So uh, I've probably got several thousand websites under my belt. So if it weren't for uh, consistency in my naming structure and consistency in the way that I program, it would get really tough had I a need to go back over um, some code that I created a year earlier. So two things that we can do is one, we keep a, a, a very organized file folder structure uh, and two, maybe three things. Uh, two, the second thing is we keep uh, uh, consistent naming. Um, so I use uh, style.css as my style sheets. You can use whatever you like, but that seems to be, you know, that's what I use and that's consistent uh, across all my websites. And then also, um, I forget the third one. I was going to say the third one. Well, it was two things. There you go. <laughs> very important. A very, the, the third one was really pointless, I, I tell you. So there we go. We've got our organized folder structure. We're good to go. We're never going to upload the raw folder. This is just for our own reference. And of course, we want to keep it on a backup as well so that if we ever need it, uh, we can go back over it. Let's open back up our files uh, back into gedit or uh, if you're using a different editor. Um, that's fine too. Eric, do you remember the Windows uh, editor that we ha have used in the past? There was like a, a nice, like a notepad replacement. It was almost like WordPad, but it was. Uh, um, PS. It, what, what for? Uh, yeah, it was something PHP? like that. It was yeah, PSPad. Yeah. PSPad. Thank you, my was, friend. Because yeah. as I'm doing this, I realized that I had promised that I was going to look that up, and I don't think I brought up Windows once this week. <laughs> 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 so I didn't have anything to remind me. Let's do a quick Google search to find PS Pad. There we go. That's fantastic. So if you're on Windows and you want to follow yes. along with this, this is the one. I, I think it was a, a fantastic. Actually, I, I use thing. it quite regularly. Yeah, and you're, on, uh, you're on Windows. Yeah, and yeah. sorry, sorry, kids, I'm still using Windows. Um, you can uh, adjust some of the uh, preferences so that it, uh, you know, uh, certain things that it. It'll, it'll add, uh, you know, closing tags to yeah, HTML, which sometimes is annoying when you're... Can be. Can, well, when <laughs> you, I think when be. you get to the point where you are coding the code... Yeah, you don't actually You don't want, want it to be closing tags because you're doing it, and so, you, yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> so looking at PSPAD, thank you, Eric, PSPAD.com, just like it sounds. So this is uh, what it I would recommend. It has its own little FTP... Uh, Oh, yeah. application built in. But this is uh, not open source, but it is freeware, so you can download it absolutely free. The latest build published in the forum. That sounds fine. 
<laughs> so that's where I'm looking. <laughs> Download links. There you go. So I, I believe this is strictly Windows. But if you're on Windows and you want to follow along with us, that's the one you want to use. And you're using Dreamweaver. I am. Is there a free version that you can, like something that you can use for um, free on Mac? That you I know? believe there's one called Komodo Edit. Okay. I yeah. think. Um, like Dreamweaver, just a lot more simplified. Okay. So it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Great. Um, and do we have your Mac up on it? Yeah, we do, don't we? We have the ability to bring that up on our screen tonight. That's good. Um, so we'll be able to follow along. So PSPad.com, if you would like to follow along with... Uh, with us on Windows. I'm using gedit on Linux and we've got Dreamweaver up on the Mac as well. Mm. Good coffee tonight, eh? He's nodding. It's empty yeah. almost. <laughs> it's, mine's empty. I just finished off my Ubuntu. How's your Hershey's? There we go. I may go for a coffee run, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so where we left off last week, we didn't get too far, but we got our, you remember that we had our, our demo site set up demo.cat5.tv and if we go there now go into the 001 folder and you'll see that we have this red frame here so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to look at our original mockup and determine you know where do we go next so our mockup is a PSD I'm going to just open that up in the GIMP there we go so it really is a red background but the lower part, the area that is going to have the actual text of our website is going to be white. You can see that that's the, the far background uh, color. But up here is going to be red. So what we need to do... What? No, I can't see You can't see? Oh, well, you've got to tell me these things. I can buy you a whiteboard. And, you know, <laughs> you can. I can't see. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So... Up here we see that the logo is, is going to be on the red, but then below that is going to be basically, it's like a, it's a square. It's a rectangle, right? So this makes things easy. That's going to be one div. Um, so what we want to look at is how our logo is going to be positioned. So jumping over to our folder here, which you can download directly from cat5.tv slash webdev. And within this folder, I'm going to take a look at my images and grab the Aspire Place logo. In Linux, if I double click on that, I'm going to see down at the bottom there are the dimensions of the image. Uh, in Windows, you're going to need to possibly right click on it and go properties, uh, which in Linux you can also do. But it's a little couple extra clicks. So 162 by 58 are the dimensions of this image. So in order to add it, we want to, we want to know that. Let's just slap it inside of our wrapper here. So to add an image, we're going to go IMG SRC which is image source equals, we're in HTML, so I'm going to put opening and closing tags for the image, and I'm going to go images, this is relative to our current file location, this is index.php, so we're going into the images folder, slash, and then the name of that file was aspireplacelogo.ping, with underscores uh, in place of spaces. In Linux, I can, oh, oh well, anywhere, you can rename and just highlight it and copy the uh, renamed text. So now I've got it in my clipboard as I zoom in here and paste. Now I have that. Okay, so the image is there. Now we need to specify the width equals, and what did we say it was? 162. Width equals 162. This is not CSS, so we're not adding dot the PX. This is HTML. And then uh, height equals 50, 58. <laughs> Zoom sometimes messes me up. Throw a slash in there to uh, end the element, XML compliance. So quick question. Yeah. Why would you not uh, put your width and height in CSS opposed to, or with CSS opposed yeah. to just in your HTML? You can do that, for sure. Um, width and height on an image is something that can be either or. Positioning elements tend to, like if I'm working with a table, you're going to want to set it up in, in the CSS more than the, uh, than the HTML because HTML doesn't give you as much control over the style. With this, it's an either or because it does exactly the same thing. So it's just preference, yeah. essentially. Or just speed of getting it in there. We don't need to create a class for this, okay. for example. If I wanted to specify this in CSS, this image would now have to have an ID. Um, because we'd have to 
like we could call it ID equals logo, and then the logo ID in CSS could have those those right. dimensions, which we okay. may end up doing anyways. But we kind of thinking linearly, um, we'll we'll do this kind of step by step, and then we may change it down the road. So, all right. So let's take a look. So that has placed that at the top of my wrapper at the left hand side because wrapper doesn't have any alignment uh, in the uh, in in the uh, actual like text alignment in there. So I'm going to connect to my FTP. I'm going to upload that to my web file. This is, uh, <laughs> Hillary's on the screen and she... <laughs> the look. <laughs> that was Hillary, by the way. <laughs> Are you surfing YouTube down there? Like <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. I'm going to mute your mic. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to create a new folder. We're going to call this one 002. Oh, you are just absolutely ashamed. She's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've created a folder called 002. So if you're in 001, you can, uh, you can get out of that and go to 002. That's on the demo.cat5.tv site. And I'm uploading these changes, including my uh, revised index file. So back here, again, changing to 002 and you'll see that the logo is slapped right in there so now I think we're ready to get rid of that red border we don't really need that at this point so in our CSS for our wrapper we're done with that border we can delete that we must have FTP up somewhere else there we are okay so I'm going to upload my style.css file because I just changed it So now if I F5, that red border is gone and we're good to go. So looking at the mock-up that you created, Krista, I think there was a little bit of padding at the top, top of, of that. At the top. Yeah. yeah. So it kind of starts where the, the darker red ends. Yeah. So this should be moved down to like, you know, to about there kind of thing. Right. So what we can do, two ways we can do this, we can, you can play the guessing game and just kind of guess at it. or Use your marquee, might as well, and just figure out, you know, how, how tall is that? I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and go edit, paste as new image. Now I've got that, that size and I see that it's 24 pixels high. So I know that I need to pad the top or mar uh, add a margin at the top of that image for 24 pixels. So here's where, as I was kind of hinting, we, we may have to create an ID anyways on the logo. That's fine because here we go. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. Let's get rid of that width and height. We're going to go ID equals logo. Okay, so now it looks like that. Just kind of learning as we go so that we know what all this stuff does. Now it's an ID, so I put a pound sign in there. Logo. Okay, if it was a class, and we're going to learn what, what all that means, but if it was a class equals logo, it would look like that. Because it's an ID, we've got a pound sign there. I'm going to paste in width equals 162 and change it to CSS, so it looks like this. And height equals 58 is going to look like this. Just like that. And now what we want to do is margin top. What do we say? 24 pixels, so let's say 25 pixels at the top. I added one pixel because I like to round things to a nice even number, don't I? <laughs> so I'm going to upload again that style.css file. And you notice that we're making changes to the site, but it's just a little bit of text in a style sheet. So I'm just going to drag that over to my FTP server, go back to my site, and refresh. And as I refresh, watch that logo. Uh, let's see. Didn't do anything. That happens. Oops. Oh, well, see, if, and this is one of the things that you learn as, you, as you're working on a website. Sometimes you just back and forth, back and forth. What I did there is I created an ID of logo for the logo. Yeah. I, I uploaded the style sheet, but I didn't upload the index.php. So what I'm looking at is still not, it doesn't have a specified ID. So I have to upload that file as well. 
I missed one file there. Hit F5, and there we go. So now it is pretty much flush with that line there. We can move it down, we can move it around just by using those margins. Um, if we want to move it down just a little wee bit, oh, throw a couple of pixels on there kind of thing. And now you notice, now I only have to upload the style.css. There we go. So it's just got a few more pixels there, so it's not quite touching the line. There we go. So now next up, we need to create uh, an ability to, to add a menu. So this is where things get a little bit tricky because we're working now not top to bottom, we're working left to right. Um, so something that we may want to do, for example, is we might take that logo um, and let's put a div next to it. And we're going to call this ID equals menu. And again, we're going to always close that div um, when we open it. And I do that right up front so that I don't have to remember because it's already done. And I don't have to look and figure, oh, did I close that div? I do it right away and then it's done. Uh, and then we don't have any elements that are breaking our website. So with that, I'm going to add a space which is nbsp semicolon and nbsp semicolon. So it's not going to output any text, but it's just going to give me an HTML space. And I'm going to create a new ID in my style.css file. And we were going to call this uh, menu border solid one pix white. Okay. So what I've done there is I've created a div I again need to upload both my style sheet and my index. You're going to see what's going to happen here. Again, we're thinking left to right, but we haven't specified that yet. So the white box is now going to appear directly below our logo. Divs by default are going to take up the entire width of the, uh, the element that is wrapping it. In this case, it's the wrapper. That's why it's only going that far. It can only go that far. If you didn't have that wrapper, it would extend all the way to the edge of your browser because the body is the uh, whatever whatever it's uh, surrounding that element. So what we want to do now is we want to make it so that that is to the right hand side of our logo. So what we can do, we can take the width of our site, 950 uh, pixels, that's a wrapper, right? And then we know that our logo is 162, so automatically we know, you know what we need to do here. Or what we can do we use a float element. Okay, so this is kind of like aligning that element. Let's see what happens. And a lot of times there's a little bit of experimentation that goes in. Again, the we haven't specified a width yet for this div that's going to be our menu, and therefore um, it's not going to. Uh, it, it's going to be like that. <laughs> Don't know the technical term for like that. So what we can do now is we can float it right. Okay, floating is exactly what you would expect it to be. And now we're going to specify a width. What could happen is, is let's say we go 500 pixels. Okay, we're going to upload our style sheet again. And you see what happened there is it's moved the box, five, it's 500 pixels wide and it's just over on the right hand side of the logo and the logo is not forcing it to go to the next line because it's float left. Okay, So now we can extend that, you know, another 200, 250 pixels. So let's try, let's try 750 pixels and see how that extends. There we go. So that looks about uh, where we would want it based on our mock-up. Okay. So now again, we need to make sure that it's in the right position from the top. So we already learned that margins are what's going to move an element down. Padding, on the other hand, is going to pad the inner uh, side of the div. So if I added padding, it's going to be on the inside of the div as opposed to a margin, which is on the outside of the div. So here what we're going to do is we're going to add a margin there that's going to take us down so that it's basically flush with um, the, the spot that is supposed to be just under the logo on the right hand side. So margin top. 
And uh, the height of the logo is 58. So we'll say, um, in this case, let's say, oh, there's padding of 28. So let's start with, remember this is the top edge of that div, so let's start with 75 pixels just to see where that puts it, because remember, this is the top of the div. There we go. So that's a little bit too low. See? So then again, we just kind of move it up a little bit. And you see why I, why I tend to put a border on something, because it really helps you to position something on the screen. Mm -hmm. Because with web, you don't have that chance to drag and drop for real, like because Weissawig is, is only really goes so far. When you're tr really truly programming something, um, it helps to have that to be able to see where where it is that this is going to actually fall on your screen. Um, so here we go. Let's bring that margin top down to 65 and see what that does. <laughs> there we go. So that's looking pretty good. So now this element, as you know, the, the white square is going to be our menu. That's exactly where our menu is going to fall. Uh, and now we have a place to place that. So all we need to start doing now, because we have that element, now what I can do is I can remove that white border, right? because we know it's in the right position and it's where we want it. I can save that and I can go up to my index and now within this div I can get rid of that NBSP and I can start going home, about us, etc. Right? And now, if I upload those two files, and bring up our website, and refresh, I have a spot that my menu is uh, going to be at. I'm just going to mute your microphone there. Aaron. There we go. All right, so that uh, that is going to get us into next week, where we're going to start. Uh, we're going to kind of finalize the way that our menu is going to function. We're going to set up how uh, our body wrapper uh, is going to uh, maintain the actual uh, content of the site, and we're going to get kind of work our way down on that website and get it so that uh, it's looking just like the mock-up. And very soon, we're going to be able to start populating it with uh, with content and breaking it out into individual uh, pages so that you can actually navigate this site. Um, so that's demo.cat5.tv slash 002. Sorry, I've done all the talking, haven't I? No, no. But, uh, are you learning some stuff? I hardly noticed. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> are you still here, Chris? Oh, hi. <laughs> just, <laughs> just over here, hi. <laughs> well, you're following just along on the Mac, right? And I am, yeah. So does that, uh, does that, you starting to see how those elements kind of fall into place? And yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of neat. I do all like the Photoshop stuff and plug yeah. it all in, but it's nice to see how, uh, how it, it goes from. It comes together when it. Yeah, from Photoshop to, uh, to web. So. Right. right. Yeah. This is Category 5 TV, and of course, uh, this, this is a part of our series on web development that uh, Krista and I have been putting together for you. Um, you can find out more and, uh, and watch uh, other episodes in the series at cat5.tv slash webdev and you'll be able to, uh, to download uh, any of the files that you see here on the show as well uh, with regards to this. And we'll have some links uh, to the different applications that you can use as well. So thanks so much for watching tonight. It's been nice having you here.